Mexico City. Enormous, yet charming. Hectic, and peaceful. Gritty, yet colorful. Both rich and poor. It is the largest city in North America with a metropolitan area of over 21 million. Once the capital of the Aztecs, a city where engineering, architecture, technology, and art flourished at the same time that Europe remained in the Dark Ages, it became the first stop in the New World and now reflects that blend of indigenous and Spanish culture at every turn. Join me as I spend seven days exploring this exciting metropolis. Hi, I'm Alfie. In 2020, the pandemic struck, my father died suddenly, and my six-year relationship came to an end. I fell into a severe depression and decided I needed a change in order to heal and find some joy in life again. So I quit my teaching job, packed my bags, and left small town New Jersey to travel south of the border, practice my Spanish, and start this travel vlog. I'll share all my adventures, travel tips, and hopefully inspire you to visit these places as well. This is Gringo Interrupted. Okay, today is your day three in Mexico City. We're gonna hit Chapultepec Park. We're gonna see a castle. We're gonna hit the neighborhood of Polanco. And we are going to the Museum of Anthropology, which I think is the best museum in the city. I'm trying to get a little sun on my bald spot today. Uh, we're gonna walk. It is about a 49 minute walk, but it is a beautiful day as it has been every day here. So I don't mind. Let's go. On my way, I pass by Parque España, or Spain Park, which is beautiful. And if you're out early enough, you will undoubtedly see a bunch of dog trainers with their dogs. You see these guys all over Roma and Condesa. A little doggy love always makes my day better. <laughs> You want to get yourself to the main entrance to Chapultepec Park, which is on Paseo de la Reforma. The Chapultepec subway station is right nearby. Considered the lungs of Mexico City, Bosque de Chapultepec, or Chapultepec Forest, is one of the largest city parks in the Americas. The name Chapultepec means Grasshopper Hill in Nahuatl, the language of the Aztecs, who considered this spot both sacred and strategic. The park is divided into four sections, but we're concentrating on section one, the oldest and most visited section. Among its attractions are a historic castle, a zoo, pre-Hispanic ruins, an amusement park, three lakes, and numerous museums. Your first sight will be the Altar de la Patria. Inside the columns are the remains of the six Niños Héroes, or child heroes, who are revered all throughout Mexico. The six teenage cadets, as young as 13 years old, refused to retreat while defending the castle above on the hill from the U.S. invasion during the Mexican-American War. Instead, they fell to their deaths. Numerous streets and monuments are dedicated to the Niños Héroes. Follow the signs for Chapultepec Castle. You'll approach this building where you pay the entrance fee and then walk up the hill to the castle. Just a tiny bit of a workout going up this hill. 
you'll pass by this pond, which actually represents the founding of Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital that would become Mexico City. The Aztec legend states that they were told by the gods to find an eagle perched on top of a cactus with a snake in its mouth. This would be the location where they should build their city. They found the eagle in Lake Texcoco, in which they built their city on man-made islands, showing off their superior engineering skills. The legend is depicted on the Mexican flag today. Chapultepec Castle, built between 1785 and 1864, was initially to be a summer house for the Viceroy. It was abandoned for a while, then used as a gunpowder warehouse and later a military academy before it became the official residence of Emperor Maximilian I. From 1882 until 1939, it was the official residence of the Mexican presidents. Today, it is the National Museum of History. It was also the filming location of the 1996 film Romeo and Juliet, starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes. Upon entering the grounds, you'll first be struck by its beautiful gardens and unparalleled views. Once inside, you'll see the stunning murals above and around the grand staircase. The mural on the ceiling depicts one of the Niños Héroes leaping to his death, wrapped in the Mexican flag. The museum focuses on art and historical artifacts showing the history of Mexico, from the Aztecs to the Spanish conquest to the vice royalty to independence from Spain to the Mexican Revolution and all the way into the present day, all displayed in the castle's decadent rooms and courtyards. One of the interesting exhibits is the Casta paintings from the 18th century. Because everyone was banging each other in the New World, a system of castes was created in order to label the racial mix of their offspring. For example, a Spaniard and a native produced a mestizo. A Spaniard and a black person produced a mulatto. A Spaniard and an albino person produced a torno atrás, or throwback. There are 16 racial groupings in total. The museum and castle are enormous. You'll definitely spend a couple hours here. Thank you.
holy shit, that was <laughs> way more impressive than I thought it was going to be. On my first trip to Mexico City, I skipped this castle. I spent probably three hours in there. Wow, that was amazing. Head back down the hill and go to your left. You'll pass by a bunch of food stalls, so if you want a snack, grab one. It's mostly junk here, so maybe bring some snacks with you. You'll pass by one of the lakes of Chapultepec Park, and of course you'll see the CDMX letters, and you know, you have to do it. You could also take a paddle boat out, or you can just stand around, look at the lake, think about your life, get depressed, and move on. Take some time to explore the park. It's pretty massive, so don't stray too far away. A good map app like Google Maps will come in handy here. One of the coolest spots in the park is the Fountain of Nezual Coyoto. Nezual Coyoto, besides being a ruler, scholar, philosopher, and poet, engineered the aqueduct that brought drinking water to Tenochtitlan and designed the dikes to keep the city from flooding. Walk back towards Paseo de la Reforma to the museum of your choice, either the Museum of Modern Art, the Tamayo Museum of Contemporary Art, or my favorite, the Anthropology Museum. You'll pass by some not so great food options, so I recommend grabbing lunch in the museum's restaurant. When entering the Museum of Anthropology, the largest and most visited museum in Mexico, you're first greeted by the massive inverted fountain called Paraguas, or umbrella. The museum houses 11 halls, each representing a different region or culture of Mexico. I suggest heading straight back to the Mexica, or Aztec Hall, in the back. But first things first. There is a cafe for quick food, but I was feeling bougie, so I decided to sit at the restaurant. I ordered chicken in a mole sauce from Oaxaca. This mole was made from chili and chocolate and was delicious. It's a little expensive, but hey, you do get rose petals. Head straight to the Mexica Hall. Historians and archaeologists referred to them as the Aztecs, but they called themselves Mexica. This is, of course, where Mexico gets its name. The artifacts in this hall come from Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital that lies in ruins under Mexico City. The most iconic piece here is the sunstone or calendar stone. It was discovered under the Metropolitan Cathedral in 1790 during repairs to the church. Not an actual calendar as once believed, the stone does depict the cosmic cycles of the sun. The hole on this stone sculpture used to contain the human hearts that were ripped from the chests of those sacrificed to the gods. The stone of Montezuma depicts scenes of Aztec conquest over other tribes and was used as a platform for prisoners to fight to the death. The model of Tenochtitlan's central plaza shows what the Spanish saw as they gazed in awe upon the city built on water. A replica of a feathered headdress worn by rulers such as Montezuma. If you're enjoying this video, please do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe button. It would make me as happy as this guy.
hit the Mayan hall next. The Maya civilization, concentrated in the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, predates the Aztecs, and their descendants still live in the area and still speak the Mayan language. Be sure to check out the replica of the tomb discovered in Palenque in southern Mexico, as well as the jade mask the ruler was found wearing. There is also an outdoor area displaying Mayan temples and buildings. Next, check out the Gulf Coast Hall, where you'll find the colossal Olmec head. The Olmecs were the first major civilization in Mexico, and the head dates back to 900 BC and weighs 25 tons. There have been 17 of these heads found in Mexico. You could spend the whole day in this museum, but if you're done and you have a little more energy left, head on over to Palanco. It's about a 30 minute walk, so I decided to take an Uber because I am beat. The Palanco neighborhood is the Beverly Hills of Mexico City. Have your Uber driver drop you off at Parque Lincoln, which is a really beautiful park named after Abraham Lincoln. From the park, walk north into the heart of Polanco. One of the most expensive real estate markets in all of Latin America, Polanco boasts the most upscale restaurants in the city, as well as luxury shopping, fancy hotels, diplomatic missions and embassies and museums. The neighborhood really took off after the 1985 earthquake when wealthy residents and businesses relocated here due to its more stable ground. Even the traffic lights are fancy here. After trying to scrape the dog shit off your sneaker, check out President Mazarik Avenue, which is considered the Rodeo Drive of Mexico City. Social media influencers love to get a shot of themselves in front of this wall. Mine didn't turn out so great. I wasn't about to spend a fortune on dinner, so I found the only fast food joint in the neighborhood. By fast food, I mean comida corrida, which is an economical meal of four courses. They are served in fondas all over the city. I love them. You get to choose from a couple options for each course. I chose the soup, mixed vegetables, and a hamburger, which I was surprised to see that this is how it came out. So I threw some green salsa on there and it was pretty good. And for dessert, a small cup of lime jello. All that for a hundred pesos.
anybody who knows me knows I love gelato, so I had to stop here as well. I did not come to Polanco when I was in Mexico City the first time because everything I read about it, there was nothing that interests me. It's just, you know, a very rich area. So I would not judge you if you skip this completely because really it is, you know, I mean, it's beautiful. If you're that kind of person, you've got a lot of money that you want to spend, definitely come over here, but it's not really my scene. And the gelato is not even that good. The gelato cost exactly the same amount as my four course meal. Uh, my phone is on 10% and I forgot my charger cord. So I am hoping that I can get an Uber home because I am really tired. <laughs> the sun is really strong today. Uh, and if my phone dies while waiting for an Uber, I am going to have to walk to the Metro and take like three different trains to get home. And it's rush hour, which means the subway trains are going to be packed. I made it. Check out my next episode, day four, where I visit the beautiful neighborhood of Coyoacan, the home of Frida Kahlo, and go on a date.